Administration sources tell us Democrats will choose Nick Scutari as the next Senate president. Minority groups say they're being shut out, though, of leadership roles and not being considered. Senior political correspondent David Cruz has that story. Elections have consequences, so the saying goes. And while the counting of all the ballots from all the new voting modes is ongoing, Democrats, who seem to have held on to control of the legislature and the governor's mansion, are now wondering what message voters were sending to the legislature and the governor. He's done running for re-election. He doesn't run for re-election again. But this legislature runs again in two years. And they've got their eyes very closely on what happened on election day and what's going to happen in two years. And so for them, the idea that they're going to be more cautious, the idea that they're going to do what they think that they have to do to get the right voters out is absolutely on their minds. And for a lot of observers, that heralds a more moderate approach, a focus on pocketbook issues as opposed to what those in Murphy's base of black and brown voters have been clamoring for, mainly police reforms, subpoena-empowered civilian complaint review boards, and a settlement to a school segregation suit, among other things. I think the primary considerations and the primary things that need to be focused upon is to ensure that New Jersey becomes a more cost habitable state rather than just merely doing hashtag type of you know, far left initiatives that really at this moment in time are not the most important things that we need to focus on. I don't want it ever to be mistaken that black and brown people are not concerned about pocketbook issues. Legislative Black Caucus Chair Savanda Sumter says it's a fallacy to think that social justice issues and local tax rates are mutually exclusive agenda items. But signals are already being sent that moderates will likely hold sway, especially in the seeming acceptance of Senator Nick Scutari, another middle-aged white guy, as the next Senate president. That has steamed many in the state's minority community who felt that it was time to showcase the party's diversity by maybe falling behind a woman of color for the seat. When you have women at the table, you have a voice that's at the table that is very concerned about pocketbook issues. Charles Boyer is more direct. Although he supported Murphy personally and gives him credit for many accomplishments, he says it would be wrongheaded and insulting to abandon the progressive agenda supported by the governor's black and brown base. When we're talking about things like police accountability, when we're talking about segregation in the schools, when we're talking about the drug war, um, to have three men at the table, three white men at the table that control uh, what comes up for a vote and what moves from a policy perspective to all be white males uh, really speaks to how structural racism operates even in so-called white progressive circles. The governor who was involved in the negotiations over the next Senate president late last week was asked about it today. It's just a fact. I, I, I don't control uh, the process of who's the Senate president, who's the speaker. So I have to, I have to separate what I think about these folks as individuals versus a, an overall passion for diversity. But I also uh, don't want to, I don't want to imply that I can control a process which is not mine to control. And so I'll, I, that's, I will leave it at that. Those are not entirely comforting words for those in the governor's base who are already of the mind that the administration has not fully delivered a return on their political investment. I'm David Cruz and J Spotlight News.